Greetings, Keepers, and welcome back to the somewhat regular revisit of Keeper RL for the channel. This is fast becoming a bit of a staple for the channel, really. Keeper Roguelike has recently had a fairly extensive update, so once again, we are here to check out what has changed. Now, if Keeper RL is entirely unfamiliar to you, this is a game which kind of merges the ideas of the It's Good To Be Bad Dungeon Keeper franchise with roguelikes. So there's more of a permadeath kind of feel to it. The idea is you will play a game, you will, you will maybe take control of characters, it'll be a little bit more turn-based, and eventually you will either win your campaign or you will die, at which point you just start another game. There is no real saves coming. You can also play this in adventure mode, kind of more of a, a roguelike staple, that one. And uh, you can even go back to your old, uh, uh, your old dungeons that have been successful and try and attack them as an adventurer. Or indeed, you can attack the dungeons of other players, one of the really particularly nice features. Now, I mentioned that Keeper RL has recently got a fairly big update, and that is what we're going to be checking out today, that big update. In fact, it's been, it's, there's been a few updates since the last time I played. Uh, Necromancers is the is the um, kind of key feature of this larger update. But as I mentioned, you can play as an adventurer. You can play as many different uh, characters. You can have the evil wizard, the evil knight, the less evil knight, the less evil gnomes, the less evil dwarves, a couple of unlocks, uh, or maybe they're just placeholders, and the very evil necromancer. We're going to be checking out the necromancer today. It has a very different playstyle. All of the races do to a certain degree. I have not played any of the less evil races. I, I've got to be honest, I, I love the fact that it's not good versus evil, it's uh, evil versus less evil. Ah, uh, fantastic. Now, for this game, we are going to be starting a new game, a new, brand new campaign. It's going to take us a few moments to fetch the dungeons from the server, and this is what I was talking about earlier in regards to visiting previous dungeons. You can, as a part of your game, have successful or less successful dungeons from other people or indeed from your local hard drive in the game as part of the game world. In the campaign, we the, the whole uh, point of the campaign is to completely conquer the world. The world for the purpose of this game is this entire area here. Each one of these tiles is a map. Anything with a highlight, uh, a, a kind of a dotted line border, is somewhere we can visit. We've got the lesser villain of the Hydra, the giant spider, the Cyclops, but we have got the allies of gnomes, evil gnomes. Okay, fair enough. And an unknown ally over there. But somewhere around here there will be uh, main villains, and these are the primary antagonists for our story. These are the ones we have to beat. We have to beat all of the main villains. You do not need to beat all of the lesser villains, but typically you probably will. Now, you can also add retired dungeons and i think we absolutely will let's go ahead and find some dungeons to add this dungeon over here has got a conquer rate of two to five this is an evil knight though let's find some uh, less evil people uh nidzion sure we'll we'll fight against you let's add you in there nidzion is here conquer rate is one of one so it has been in someone's game once, and that person managed to conquer it. Marvellous. Uh, oh, okay, so this one has actually been in someone's game once, and it wasn't conquered. I will add them for a little bit of extra spice, sure. Now, that has caused the map to be regenerated, and you can choose different biomes, you can ch choose different modes as well, but I think this is a good one. We've got the lesser villains of the Dryads, we've got the allies of the Gnomes, the lesser villains of the Tree Spirits, and the lesser villains of the ants. We've got lizard men. I've not actually ever encountered them. We've got unicorn herds. What? That's new to me as well. Uh, Dark elf allies. Uh, Hitrach, the main villain over there. It's one of the uh, uh, dungeons that we've loaded. And Nidzion, a dungeon there as well. So we've got two other main villains that we'll need to conquer. Now, with all of that sent down, let's go ahead and just jump with both feet into the game. And here we are. Keep a roguelike. Alpha 35. This patch ha was released on July 4th. Below is a very short summary. We encourage you to check out the full change log at keeperrl.com. Rebalance combat favoring large numbers of units. Equipped weapons rendered on units. Configurable key bindings, etc, etc. Okay, we are now in the game. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pause the game. Because there is much that we need to get done. Now, this is the game world. 
as we see it. Uh, we've got a bit of a river here. We can see that this is going to be in the mountain. That's an iron vein. This is a granite vein. Uh, there is a surprise over here. Now, that could be an enemy on the map. It could be an ally on the map. One of the other things that has changed in a big way since the last time I played is that we should be able to go up or down. We now have Z levels, and these uh, allow us to build vertically our dungeon, not just uh, out into the mountains. As such, there is a, as far as I'm aware, there's not really a limit on the resources that you're going to have. You can just keep going down or keep going up until you find more and more resources, though I suppose suppose you'll eventually run out of mountain, uh, though I don't know if there's any kind of lower level um, end point, maybe a, a lake of lava or something like that, if uh, this is going the Dwarf Fortress route. But you can also build structures outside, there's a lot of things for us to play with. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the things that the Necromancer is going to be playing around with. First and foremost, we've got zombies, I'm assuming instead of imps, yes, they've got the ability to dig by the looks of it. Uh, let's have a look. Um, yes, yeah, so, so they've got a digging ability. So these are going to be the equivalent of the imps from the main game, and indeed imps from Dungeon Keeper, if that's the game you're, you're much more familiar with. Uh, but in terms of what we can build, we've got installations. Uh, looks pretty normal there. We can build portals, so that's actually kind of cool. Crafting. We've got the more table. One of the things with the Necromancer that is very different from the base game is that the Necromancer doesn't recruit followers. You don't have like migrations of, of uh, monsters to your dungeon based on the equipment or, and rooms that you've built, a la uh, Dungeon Keeper and uh, some of the other races. I, I'm not sure if all of the races have that. I believe that gnomes don't have migration either, and they build golems uh, and uh, automatons. But the necromancer has to build their army. They, 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 can't, they can't make friends with other people. They have to make their friends out of other people, which is actually, uh, hmm. Well, that sounds like a bit of a catchphrase for, for necromancers. I'm going to have to remember that one. Uh, wooden dummy, I, these are training items. The higher the tier, the uh, more levels a unit can learn by working on them. Uh, archery, uh, living space, oh, very nice bed there. Some coffins, that doesn't surprise me with a necromancer. Phylactery. Hmm. Free yourself from your body. Increases the luxury by one, I see. Uh, the library, much like the training dummies, only for the mind instead of the body. Uh, we've got some other armor racks. Ooh, these are nice. Now, is this going to work like in other games where I can just stack all of my weapons? Is there some sort of upper limit? We're going to have to find that out, but that is that is a new as well, and that, that's going to be much nicer if I don't have to have a single tile on the floor for each piece of equipment that I make. Uh, and then just general different doors and so on. While I'm not seeing, though, are traps. Hmm. Do necromancers not believe in traps? That's unfortunate, because I believe in traps. Oh, well. I guess we're not getting that. Right, uh, okay, well, the first thing we're going to do then is we need to give our Zombles something to do. And uh, one of the things I like to do right early on is take control. Now, this is very much where the roguelike meets Dungeon Keeper kind of feel comes from. Is We've, we've taken control, and this is a very roguelike experience of controlling these units. Now, I'm going to have a wander around. The very first thing that I like to do is get an idea of, of where I've set up. Oh, there are corpses out here already. Hmm. What made the corpses? And will it turn me into one? I'm very weak right now. I'm very, very weak right now. Uh, Avak is not a very strong keeper at the very beginning. Never is. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, the, this looks a bit more promising. Okay, so it's not as terrible. There are a couple of mushrooms around there. Regeneration mushrooms. A couple of uh, odds and sods. In fact, I may come out here and grab those in a bit. But I've seen enough, I think, for now. So I'm going to relinquish control of the keeper. Uh, there is something over there, and that's kind of worrying. Because if you look over here, that is a wall with texture that tells me that there is a cavity on that side. Also, I can see fields. So there's going to be farmers over there. Um, your minions discover the location of humans. Well, a little bit sooner than I expected, I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay, uh, let's get ourselves inside. Our zombies, oh, they are vulnerable to sunlight. Ooh, that's, that's unfortunate. You see, imps can work in the day. Zombie, well, I mean, they work underground in the day, I guess. But, uh, all right, we're going to have to get ourselves indoors and sharpish at that. Uh, now, if we don't have traps... One of the things that I would often play in uh, the way I would play in Keeper RL is my entry 
area would quite often consist of like a trap maze. And I would build that right from the, the, the get-go. Uh, with the idea that eventually I wouldn't have traps right at the beginning, but eventually I would want to be able to to force enemies before they actually engage my forces in my in my dungeon to have uh, gone through a gauntlet of traps. If we can't do that, it kind of frees us up in a little way to be a little bit more uh, just uh, uh, fast and loose with the way that we build our dungeon. This will be good enough. I'll get a little little area there for some resources. Now, will the uh, zombies go straight there? Hopefully they will, because we desperately need you to get inside, Melados. Uh, I could also possibly give them a too wide area, but I don't think we will. Instead, let's grab some more of the trees from out here, because there's going to be an awful lot of stuff that I want you guys to bring in once you get the chance to. Uh, it looks like my character... What? Did I just wallop the zombie? Ab Did you just tell me abusing... Oh, oh my lord. Okay, uh... Avag is is not messing around today. Minions are not getting the work done fast enough, so minions are going to get a smack around the chops to learn to dig faster. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. You can speed the game up. There are, I think, uh, four different speeds, so and not including pause. There we go. Let's get them out there. Only one minion can work on one one block at a time, unfortunately, so it does take a little bit of time. Uh, but now that we've uncovered enough area here, let's get some resources in there. Now, the minions who do not have any... Oops, let me uh, make sure that that's all there. Do not have a job. We'll go out and grab stuff. Okay. Now, uh, next, I would like some doors. Now that they've started to collect things, it'll register that I've got them. I want a door right there. Do I really need a door on my, my resource room? Not really, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't expect anyone to try and steal anything in there. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, additionally, I'm going to expand this little area out there so I can have maybe a light in the wall or a light in uh, light in the middle there. I did notice a standing torch. Yes, a regular torch. We can just kind of tuck in there. And I also want an... Oh, actually, that's true. We'll have an eyeball there. Now, the eyeball is an interesting one. And I do actually quite like having one just kind of outside. The eyeball gives us permanent sight on an area. It's basically a spy. Uh, but it's a spy that no one will ever try to attack. And whilst it can see fine the day, it does, uh, you know... Uh, uh, get affected by light levels. So pop a couple of torches around as well. The regular torches don't seem to cost anything, which is actually quite nice. So that'll actually get everyone inside, which I'm quite happy with. Next up, we are going to want a new room. Now, if we don't have a trap system that we can fall back on and rely on to uh, thin out any enemies, then probably the next best thing would be to have minions constantly training somewhere. So to that end, let's go ahead and make a nice big training room right at the front. Enemies get in, they have to go through our hopefully buffest minions and uh, in order to get inside the rest of the area. That shouldn't take our zombies too long to get done, hopefully. They will notice that they've got work in a moment and then come along. Oh, um, so you've got an injured leg. Really? Did your leg come off? You've got to worry about that with zombies sometimes. Uh, no, no, you're good. Uh, okay, so a boar decided to have a bit of a fight with one of my zombies. Uh, that's fine. I'm sure that zombie will eventually uh, will eventually get better. But the sad thing is, zombies are not exactly fast at the, big, at the best of times. So the fact that it got slowed down is really, really going to slow it down. Oh well. Uh, but we're going to have to wait for these rooms to get done, so I shall bring you back in a few moments when that's finished. Okay, so a, uh, an emergency redesign of the layout and a dead vulture or two later, we are almost done with this expansion down here. Now, uh, sadly, you don't always get to decide where the caverns are within your mountain fort, so uh, we're just going to have to build around this water. Later on, you can actually kind of uh, terraform a little bit, but right now that's a little bit beyond our ability. So all I want in here is a wooden training dummy and we're going to pop that one. Uh, let's pop that one right at the far end. So this way we'll have iron and then eventually adamantium right there so that the strongest minions tend to be over on that side. Now this is something I strongly recommend you do. Make sure you have sight in corridors where normally minions might not go. If an enemy were to break down this door, 
then move in here. If I didn't have someone going out there to meet them, thus putting themselves at a disadvantage, then I wouldn't be able to see what they were up to. By putting that eyeball there, that does help a little bit. Uh, the other thing you should really bear in mind as well is that light does generally help with your minions get stuff done. So uh, don't be shy with popping lights around. Now, next up, we also want a library because my dungeon master, while they can... Uh, I, I believe they are able to... Uh, oh, they can't train. Hmm. Okay, can they do anything else? They can study, but they can't train. Right, necromancers straight up cannot do... Uh, well, they can't get good at melee combat. That's very, very interesting indeed. Uh, all right then, well, uh, let's go ahead and get a little area out here, right at the back. Let's just see how far that goes, though, because I've got a funny feeling that this may, in fact, really... Is it the slowest one that's been given that job? I disapprove on such an incredibly deep level. Very well. Uh, at least they're reasonably fast at getting that done, though. So let's get out there a little bit further, see where this river goes. I mean, I know it can't go over there. Ooh, the boar is killed. Um, so, what's happened? Yeah, the keeper is wounded. When the keeper is in danger, show this pop-up and pause the game. I, I don't need to take control right now. I'm going to dismiss it for 200 turns. The keeper hurt themselves, really. Wounded, vulnerable to... The Keeper is vulnerable to sunlight? Oh, my lord. I can die by going... To well, actually, no, that's actually completely valid. Uh, yeah, me and the sun, not the best of friends, really. So it, it seems only fair that that be true in this game, too. Right, okay, so once again, I'm going to want a little area here. But, unfortunately, in a way, I'm probably going to want the uh, site to be at the corner. I would usually like it to be a 3x3 three three room. I guess I could still do that, and uh, we might even see some stuff out there in the water. Who knows? But I'm going to want a library, and the library is going to have to be fancy, because this is where our keeper is going to spend most of their time. And the keeper deserves a fancy room. Maybe we'll start small to begin with, and then we'll just keep expanding the library out over time. Um, to that end, yeah. I'll, I'll plan around that, so uh, that'll be something we'll do in the future rather than worrying about it right now. Right, okay, you. I want you to do something else. You go and do other things. No? Can I force you to go and do other oh, I mean, I could tell you you're not allowed to train for now. Um, uh, activity, no training for you. Go and work instead. There are so many places that you can go and, and start digging for me. Please and thanks. Let's get you out there. Right, next up, we're going to want uh, another eyeball over here, I'm going to think. There we go. Really? Are you not... Are you really not helping out? Wow. Rude. Uh, they can actually have phylacteries? Huh. That's very interesting, but it does seem that they're very focused on getting their combat skills up. And I suppose that isn't the worst thing in the universe, simply because I am going to want them to be quite tough eventually. But there we go, we've opened this little area out. We can see out into the water a little bit. Uh, that will be useful in the future. In fact, I can go ahead and put two standing torches. Maybe we'll make this a little little dock, a smuggler's dock, so that we can uh, send boats out, no doubt, along this river. They reached melee level two. Very nice indeed. Uh, we can pop down some more doors if I really want to. And I do kind of agree with that. Let's pop a door right there. Since this is going to be a, a place where my keeper is going to spend an awful lot of their time, seems like that would make a lot of sense. We're also going to want a couple of other rooms built off from this. Now that wall there is going to fall away, which is unfortunate. Um, because we need somewhere where I can make more undead. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and get this library going. Uh, oh, do I not have the means to do that? Uh, arteries. Oh, I don't. We cannot build a library. That is kind of shocking. All right, well, fair enough. Let's get a uh, morgue going. Now, we can have this room have multiple purposes. We've got a couple of different things we can do. We can build a poetry table in a morgue. Uh, or a morgue in a workshop. Uh, let's go with the morgue in the workshop, though there is something... <laughs> There's something diabolical about having a poetry table right next to the morgue where I'm making the undead and then I can write haikus about it. 
Ah, good times. Uh, we'll also expand this room out then, since it's not going to be the library after all. Uh, maybe we'll have the poetry table at, at the top there. And just have a little space for some statues or something. Though I'm going to have to allow for this room to be a hub room, I suppose. Oh my lord, I'm making it, making it a very uniform shape and I dislike that, if I'm honest. But it's fine. We'll, we'll somehow live with it. Uh, right, okay, so let's have a quick look. I can make a couple of units. I can make a skeleton wolf. Uh, I can upgrade it with one balm. Uh, skeleton archer, this, uh, uh, sorry, uh, three bombs for them. Skeleton warrior, zombie mage might be useful. Upgradable with three bombs. Zombie artisan, upgradable with three bombs. Uh, let's get an artisan. Uh, because we're going to want someone to start making some gear for my zombie workers. Now that's going to take me two corpses. I don't have any bombs to use on them, sadly. But uh, Avak has already gotten to work. Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. Let's get some light in here as well if we can. Uh, I could go for just wall torches here, though. Maybe make this a very well-lit room. One there, one there, one there, and one there. Don't really need that much, but it'll do for now. Then we can have doors on these sides. One leads out here to the first part of the mine that we're going to be building. I think that'll work well. And eventually we'll get some more workshop spaces in here. Maybe have a uh, room going up there into a storage area. Might be useful. Uh, let's... Go ahead and just dig out our mine right now. Let's uh, grab a little bit of everything that we can. Something like this will do nicely. There we are. And that will take care of everything. Let's get rid of these. There's no reason to have them there really. Actually, I might even do that instead. There we go. Make, make more of an organic, interesting look. Now, let's see. How are we doing with this? Zombie Artisan has been made. Marvellous. Let's have a quick look at you then. This is my regular zombies. We have a look at the regular zombies. Uh, they've got melee training, uh, limit is 3, uh, they're fairly basic, so they, currently the damage is 17 plus 5, armor is 20, work is 8. If we have a look at the zombie artisan, 10 plus 5, so their base damage is naturally higher, but uh, they can also do work at the workshop. These numbers are how efficient they are at working, I should imagine. Armor is 10 plus 2, uh, let's have a look down here. Uh, at your activities, sleeping, eating, crafting, rituals being whipped. Uh, okay, fair enough. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, your intrinsic attack is fists and legs. Both are the same. Uh, mine are the same as well, but I've actually got a wooden staff of plus four and a robe of plus one. Also, I've got the ability to do some spell damage. Right now, I don't actually know any spells that are going to be useful for that, but still an interesting one. Now then, how about we make a couple of things? It seems that there is no cost to making leather. I don't quite understand that, if I'm honest. Um, I'm also going to want a couple more uh, units. Let's go with... Let's see, zombie warriors, fairly low potential in terms of uh, in terms of their skill. Whereas the skeleton warriors... I, there's no point in me getting the skeleton archer right now. Though I suppose I could... I just won't have an archery range for them to get better. But instead, let's get a skeleton warrior. How many corpses have I got? I've got 18 corpses. Okay, well then I can definitely put together a skeletal force. I'll keep my zombies around just to, to help out. Let's get uh, a couple of z uh, skeletons. Let's go for five skeleton warriors. Confirm. And maybe send them out with a couple of skeleton wolves. Let's send them out with... Sure, let's send, send out a team. Five warriors and five wolves. Now, the warriors are going to need some equipment. So let's get uh, leather armor, leather helm, pair of boots, uh, gloves as well, shields and clubs. Now, I believe a hand torch can actually be equipped in their offhand, but these ones will cost points. So let's just focus on these first. Now, we've also got a bunch of other units here, including my necromancer. Uh, that would easily put us up to 11 total items. So let's go ahead and make 11 of all of them. Properly equip our group because we need to go out and actually start wiping out the uh, villages nearby to earn points that we can then use to research and advance our uh, understanding of the world and, and pick things like sorcery. We definitely, definitely need that. Now it's going to take a while to get all of this done. And I might actually sneak in another zombie artisan there in fact so uh i'm gonna get all of this done 
off camera and I shall bring you back shortly. Okay. Now, I actually locked the door because our skeleton wolves, like very good boys that they are, enjoy wandering around and just exploring the world at night. That's, that's fantastic. Also, I noticed that my skeletons don't seem to be vulnerable to the sun. That's amazing. Our zombies, yes, our skeletons less so. Ah, uh, you're just not getting that injured leg sorted. I can possibly try and make you a healing potion or something, or maybe I just need to kill you and make a new one. I guess that depends on what kind of necromancer we are. What kind of uh, forging pro- How do we view the forging process of the undead? Are we more Hector or more Isaac? Are my undead minions the knife that we, the hand wields, or are all of the undead minions my pets? Ah, uh, even Dark Havoc would think they were pets. Let's be perfectly honest. They're, they're, they're all my good boys. It, it was, it was, it was basically sealed the moment I called them good boys. However, there's something else about the good boys that uh, we're going to need to find out. So I guess you don't go to the chopping block right now. I'm going to try and make you a healing potion. Uh, nevertheless, our good boys can be ridden. This is amazing. They've all got their own names as well. We've got Wellinger, uh, Sergin, Ruffy, Bington, and Cree. And they can be steeds. This is glorious in every measurable way. I need another skeleton wolf right now. Uh, because one of my skeleton warriors does not have a skeleton wolf to, to ride, and that is just not tenable. Uh, also, quite a few of my uh, skeleton warriors have not gotten all of their equipment yet, so let's just make sure that they do. Uh, let's see, you're going to need one as well. Let's get that for you. You're also going to need some boots. You're also going to need a helmet. There we go, and same down here. Why have we got so many gloves? Uh, did I did I grossly overestimate? No, it's probably the zombies haven't equipped them. Right. Okay. If I yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. Fair enough. Well, uh, let's allow everyone to go and grab their bits and bobs. Do I have enough bodies left to be able to make another good boy? Uh, this is the question that I need answered right away. Uh, Avac. Stop beating up the min- yeah, I'm starting to wonder if it is Isaac or more. Uh, sorry, yeah, it is Hector or more Isaac after all. But uh, even even Isaac didn't go around smacking the undead around. My lord, one doesn't break their own tools. Right, come on. There we go. Good. Now, once you've made some good boys for the skeleton warriors to ride, there we go. Let's make sure that every single one of you has got... A skeleton wolf, that is marvellous, and all of you are now equipped. Notice that some of the armour already is, is actually fairly good armour. Uh, let's double check, is there anyone with better armour? Uh, no, there isn't, that's that's a bit of a shame. Oh well, that's fine. Uh, right, let's allow everyone to go and grab what they can, and then we're taking out the skeletons. Also, we need a lot more wood. How much time have we got? Not that much, especially if our slow zombie decides to be one of the ones to go out and grab it. Still, let's uh, let's give it a try. Now, the way you control like a group of minions in this is actually quite cool. We're going to set up all of our skeletal warriors down here, and I guess all of the skeletal wolves. Maybe not. I wonder. Let's have a quick look. Let's grab our strongest skeleton warrior. Um. Can I summon uh, the 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 wolf at all? Not really, and the wolves are already heading out. Or maybe... They, oh, no, there they go. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> this is fantastic. Got wolf riders. Can I can I go and... Where, where is your wolf? Oh, your wolf is right there. Can, can you uh, right-click mount? There we go. This is fantastic. I love it. All right, let's go and have a proper poke around. This is such a cool update. Just the fact that we've now got got loyal steeds, and they happen to be bony good boys. I don't think there could have been a better update. Uh, well, since we don't have to, ooh, okay, we don't have to worry about the sun. We can properly scout out this area and maybe go and take out the humans. Let, let's deal with the the most annoying one first. Not necessarily the most dangerous though. Uh, humans can be dangerous if they're knights, and if they are, we may reassess where we're going. I can see some of the good boys are out just uh, wandering around. I believe that is Avax Steed there. Uh, let's see what's happening over to the human settlement. Now, the nice thing about night is the humans won't be up and about yet, so we might be able to get the drop on them. 
Especially if we can get it. There's a scarecrow over there. Right, can I smack this down? Now, we don't have any weapons right now. And we could have waited for that. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm right click, push, or chat. I can chat with the pig? No. We'll just take it out. Uh, you swing your bony fist at the pig. The pig's neck is broken. The pig is killed. I mean, you know, if anyone is going to understand how to break a bone, it's going to be a skeleton, to be fair. Uh, we've only got a couple of turns, though. Uh, hello. Uh, that, that, wow. Ske the skeleton wolf just straight up killed it? That's amazing. I don't want to bash a dining table. We're not savages, my lord. Ah, oh, apparently we are savages. Oh, um, the skeleton warrior swings his fist at the child. The ch oh. Avert your eyes, Chad. Uh, I believe, is that is that a peasant riding a donkey? I kind of approve and disapprove at the same time. The tribe of humans has been destroyed. And so is the tribe of donkeys. And the tribe of cows. Uh, some gold pieces there. Some more gold pieces are here. Now, the thing about any uh, tribe is when you've killed them all, uh, quite often when you've killed the leader, but... Um, Generally speaking, if you kill the leader, you stop migration into the tribe. So, for all intents and purposes, that tribe is now done for. It's just a war of attrition that they can't possibly win. Uh, but once you've wiped out a tribe, you can clear up the area and take all of their gear. Uh, you can do that automatically by pillaging the tribe. We may well get to that, but first, let's properly explore. There's an awful lot to this place. This, uh, this map is actually quite intricate. Lots of twists and turns and little secret areas all over the place. There's a fox over there. I don't feel like chasing you down. Uh, you go live your best life, little fox. Uh, we are out here strictly looking for humanoids to eat. Uh, well, not that the skeletons will be eating them. Uh, I don't want to draw you back, if I'm honest. Okay, so what we can do, we can go into control mode full. Now, what I'm doing here is because, realistically, I know, oh wow, the the uh, <laughs> skeletal wolves get two moves a turn. That is amazing. They are very fast boys, in addition to being good boys. Uh, now, I know that the rest of my group would just wade in there and, and immediately try to kill them all. And I don't want to just yet. I've alerted them to my presence, and I kind of want them to come to me. Because if I go in there, as I was just explaining... I would probably end up killing the leader, and that would wipe out the tribe. But right now, I feel that having a renewable source of bodies where I live really does trump the inc the uh, kind of uh, inconvenience of having them occasionally attack me. As long as I've got a force that can deal with it, then it shouldn't be an issue. So let's uh, just draw them out here. Okay, that's good enough. Let's switch back to the leader only. Uh, have we got... Oh, you scallywag. All right, fine. Uh, leader, continue on. We need to uh, draw them back. Because the problem is, is I'm not even going to get the bodies from down here either. Uh, this is why you have to handle them with care when you're in a group. Is The uh, the group is very bloodthirsty. Much less so. This is, this is why the necromancer is in charge, because they understand uh, nuanced tactics, like having a renewable supply of body parts to be able to turn into more undead. Uh, skeletons only understand kill, uh, which is fine for the most part. Right, will you? No, no, not, not, even, not even close. Uh, can I switch lead? I can. Switch to this person as my leader. There we go. The whole group should now keep close. There we are. Marvellous. I've got to be honest, the uh, they have really improved the tactical layer of the game a lot. Like, that kind of level of uh, of tactics would not have been possible in the game the last time I played it. And I deeply appreciate having it now. Uh, let's continue our little explore, because we've got, still got quite a lot of time before nighttime is over. Or rather, daytime is over, and then we can send the zombies out to uh, do a little bit more uh, resource gathering. It might actually be a little bit too dangerous to send them out too far in terms of resource gathering. Now, you notice that some of this water is considered deep water. Less of it. Uh, some of it is considered shallow. We can obviously cross shallow water. Deep water, not so much, though. All right. Well, there is a little spot down here. Do I want to go and poke my face in there? Kind of do. Uh, oh, that was, it's literally just a path around. Okay, well, that's kind of useful, I suppose. Uh, right, so we know that the bandits are up there, and hopefully they will have 
gone back inside like clever so-and-sos and not be sticking their face out here anymore. Okay, that's good enough. Let's uh, draw back. And at this point, pretty much really. Moose, I realize that you feel confident because you can take on a car. But we happen to be skeleton soldiers. Not just warriors, soldiers now. Disciplined. Ah, okay. Back to back to warriors they are. Never mind. Never mind. I was I was far, far too optimistic. Uh, once again, we need to scarper before the bandits uh, come over here and kill themselves on us. Please do not, bandits. I want to use you as a renewable resource for many, many turns to come. Right, now we're going to switch over. Uh, ooh. Oh, apparently you can move them now. That's actually kind of cool. I'm going to be honest. I, I wasn't aware of that as an ability. There we go. We've got the whole pack. Right, let's head back then. Okay, so that's the bandits over there. Uh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and poke our faces in and then we're going to relinquish control once again There we are. It looks. Oh, look at that. Very very polite dismount you dismount on your way in That's uh, I, I think for like skeletons and skeleton wolves That's the equivalent of taking your shoes off when you enter your home. Well done I apologize that I was a little bit behind the curve there won't happen again but There we are Everything has been scouted for the most part. Obviously, this whole area is a mystery to us, and uh, it's a mystery we want to know about, if I'm honest. But uh, let's get a couple of new things done in here. First and foremost, we've got a level that we can take. Now, embalming, you may have noticed with the morgue, that's something that we can do to enhance the undead. Different kind of uh, levels of undead can have different amount of bombs applied to them. I believe there's... Oh, actually, okay. Uh, no, no, all of them can have bombs. Oh, what? I actually didn't have a proper look at this. We've got the Zombie King. Upgradable with 199 body parts. Please tell me, please tell me that if I... Can I stick? Like, let's, let's, let's just be modest here. Could I stick 50 arms on this thing and have 25 attacks? Or 50, depending on if I've given them, you know... 25 two-hand weapons. I really hope that that's the case. I really, really hope that that's the case. Or maybe just making a, a zombie king that's just nothing but heads and, and gnashing teeth. Oh, that would be amazing. Got the juggernaut there. Uh, slasher. That that looks very demonic. A skeleton king. Uh, I mean, you got three heads already. Oh, I really hope that's true. Vampire nobles. Vampire brutes. Vampire warriors. Uh, vampire nobles can have five bombs. Oh, and so can vampire warriors. Now, the bombs, they're basically uh, items that you can make, you can craft, and then use them to upgrade your undead with certain abilities. So, kind of like the way, if you're familiar with this game from earlier versions, if you had a demonic um, spawn that would have specific abilities, like, uh, for example, uh, a succubus had lain with a vampire, created a humanoid progeny that had specific abilities, like uh, water walking or flight and stuff like that. Well, we can give them to the undead by the look of uh, of bombs. So, a, b a bomb for extra heads. Is there any ba ever an advantage to have an extra head? Because that just feels like it would make you more confused. Uh, bomb for permanent telepathy, permanent... S p oh, remove permanent... Oh... I can make zombie workers that are not slow. <sighs> Permanent infinite carrying cap Oh my lord, this sounds amazing. Uh, digging boost. Okay, yeah, that definitely sounds like I can make a, I can make a uh, team of super zombies for doing all of the uh, work around around here. You can get things that increase the training limit. So, that, for example, a, a skeleton uh, archer has a training limit of seven. We could increase that if we particularly wanted to, and so on and so forth. That's actually pretty amazing. Advanced necromancy would allow us to go straight for vampires. Very tempting. Iron working would give us iron training dummy, the forge, the furnace. So iron weapons. And we've got iron ore over there. Distillation. Beer is for dwarves. Build a distillery and make rat moonshine for your minions. Um... It's got a very V rising kind of feel to that, doesn't it? Uh, archery target, we could get the skeleton archers then. Oh, skeleton mounted archers. Oh, I'm excited about that prospect. But for now, and I know this might seem the bo most boring of them all, we're going to go for sorcery because I want my, uh, my keeper to actually learn some spells. And with that, 
going for the uh, the vampire nobles if I saw it correctly uh, yeah they got spell abilities also zombie mages are now an option uh, but where are we gonna put our our library let's go ahead and pop a library in here somewhere uh, let's stick that over to the side once again little room and then something up there now how big of a library do we want yes I think is the only, only suitable answer to that question something like this maybe very very fancy maybe not as fancy as it could be but uh, uh, we're gonna have to live with it it's it's, it's, it's in close space you know uh, that being said I could just do that have the uh, the site there uh, nah, I think having the the little areas here I quite like them I quite like having having sight in the corridors at all times this is a this is a fine library it'll offer us quite a lot of option we can have some uh, like gold in there iron is it iron for the library iron regular maybe even get some nice uh, feet or maybe a maybe a fountain I believe I saw one yeah we can have a little fountain there oh it's gonna be grand and we could even maybe oh can we actually have statues oh I don't think we can that's a bit of a shame but uh, what I was thinking is we could have little uh, statue alcoves over there either way I think we can do some amazing things with that as a library and it doesn't seem that we really need as much space as, as the game used to need you used to have to have quite a lot of room to allow for um, your units to be able to get around the things that they needed to interact with. But this is going to take a little bit of time for our Keeper to uh, get done, or rather for the zombies to get done. I am I am very, very tempted to get embalming as the second unlock that we get. Now, the last thing that we can do is we can go down here. Since we've pillaged someone... Oh, also, uh, since there are lots of mushrooms around that we've seen, I can just choose this. Boom, there we go automatically brought over to us pillage these humans yep choose all oh i can't hmm. it seems that we don't have anywhere to store oh i need graves i guess to store corpses hmm well i don't like the idea of having my gold in the resource stockpile but uh bodies totally are a resource so how about we make a little little spot down here as well just for the corpses. I think that would make a lot of sense. Little little graveyard, maybe. And perhaps have something like that at the end. There we go. I mean, it doesn't strictly need to have a corridor leading up to it. A little, little graveyard off to the side. In fact, we can we can do a couple of, of things along those lines. In fact, one of the things... yeah, I have noticed that uh, our population is one. Yeah, we're, we're, this definitely Isaac. This is not Hector. Hector would consider all all of the bony pups to be to be a population. Isaac, a mm, little bit more questionable. We only consider ourselves to be the population of our fortress, and so we only need one one room, uh, a single bedroom. Uh, do I? No, we don't want a tiny little room. I am the keeper, after all. I need a massive room. Uh, that will be... No, uh, it's not going to be my bedroom. I think we uh, we need something a little bit more interesting than that. But it's going to take a little bit of time before my uh, zombies can get out there and bring all that wood in, sadly. Uh, let's get the last couple of installations down, though. Uh, let's get a light in there. Let's get a torch as well. Right about here. Two torches there and there. That'll do nicely. And I can also have two torches down here, I suppose. There we are. And now, finally, and at long last, some bookshelves. Let's get two of them. Let's get those bookshelves in the spot now that I don't have enough wood for them. <laughs> uh, well, poop. Uh, oh, well. Pop doors there and there. And there we go. Now, hopefully, we'll be able to get out very, very uh, soon. We're also going to need to start thinking about putting down some flooring. Flooring increases the... Uh, the luxury of a room, the higher the luxury, the more the the more um, functional the room becomes. Gets a bit of a productivity boost, if you want to think of it like that. Now, I would like to have a storage, a couple of storage elements in here, uh, namely graves, three graves, and because we're properly wise to keep an eye on the graveyard. I mean, come on, uh, let's go ahead and stick that in there. But maybe. Uh, we'll just have a single torch on the far wall. That should do everything that we're going to need to have done. There we go. 
Maybe in here we'll go for something else as well. I could even have like a, a big old candelabra. You know what? That, that would actually be a lot nicer. Uh, so remove construction of these torches. Let's not have those in there. No, no, no. We want only the fanciest of fancy. A candelabra at each of these locations. On the walls, sure. That's going to cost us 10 gold. I haven't got very many gold pieces. Uh, so that kind of does suck a little bit, but oh well. Uh, let's also get these trees gone. We're going to need all of that wood for our future constructions. Now, speaking about the future constructions, I'm afraid that's all the time that we've got for today's episode. I really do hope you've enjoyed, though. And do let me know what you've thought about the update so far as we've seen in the comments down below. And uh, should we get another episode, we may see even more that lies in store for our necromancer fort over here and whether not having traps is going to be as big of a problem as I kind of anticipate it will be. We will have to see. But that really is it for me. So until next time, and as always, do take care, everyone, and do let me know down below whether you would be a Hector kind of uh, necromantic forge master or an Isaac kind of necromantic forge master. And maybe I'll feel a little bit better about the way that this playthrough has started to go. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Take care, everyone.